and we're back. Had quite the storm yesterday. So many times we get warnings. Severe thunderstorm. Blah, blah, blah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> we sure as hell got a severe thunderstorm yesterday. So dents on the car. Hot water system smashed. Oh, well. So hot water system still working, just um, some of the glass tubes broke. Fifty dollars each apparently, and I can install them myself. So that's not too bad. Uh, probably still need to get the insurance guys out to check the check the roof. All right, so this is the um, uh, network interface card. Thought I'd just pull it out and have a. Have a look see i'm gonna leave it in there um so we've got some dip switches here i guess for setting for setting addresses and stuff interesting so that's soviet style dip switches and uh that's a rom as i've discovered so i think that's a rom or is it Uh, I thought we'd have a look at what's actually on the board. So this is a KR1801 uh, VP1. KR1801 uh, VP. Uh, okay, no, no, 65. Oh, that's serial interface. That is a. Oh, is it a 1065? Hmm. This might be a serial interface. Okay. Anyway. Yep, so that is the network interface card. Not sure. There is actually one. There is um, uh, one one for sale actually. One of these for sale um, in Ukraine at the moment. Apparently it's working, and I saw he's actually got the um, he's got a cable connected to this. So well, that's interesting. Anyway, there we go. That's the network card. I will put it back where it came from, uh, which was not like that, was it? It was like that. Oh, it's keyed as well. And, yep, so I'll put this back and then we'll have a look at the board. Okay, um, how this go in? Huh. Oh, it's, oh, okay, like this. All the way in like that. Okay. So, yeah, the fellow um, selling this in Ukraine. Um, yeah, so the cable comes out through there, through there, and out the back. So it's quite neat. Uh, quite neat arrangement. go and still access to what I assume are the dress pins so on the main board well let's go apart from having three crystals let's have a look okay so the two main well, the pointer the two ah, the two main chips are, um, are these white ones they're both the same uh, km18 one VM2 so we've got a main CPU and a peripheral processor or we have a main CPU and a peripheral processor so when, when I say that this is kind of a PDP 11 well, it's not really a PDP 11 clone but these chips are based on the PDP 11 instruction set so that PDP 11 is before my time so I might be throwing around the terminology a bit loosely um, but you know, they're not 8080s, they're not 8086, they're not Z80s, they're not 6502s, they are based on the PDP instruction set. Um, not directly compatible because they've got additional commands, I guess, or something. And here we have a whole bunch of 64 kilobit RAM. So I think this machine's got like 96k of video RAM and it's got 32k of something or something. Anyway, uh, so we've got RAM down here. 
Um, now these ones here, I'm sorry. What are these ones? These are KR1801RE2, and it's a 205 and a 206. So there should also be a 207 and a 208, and they comprise 32 kilobytes of ROM. So those chips are 8K ROMs each. So I don't know where the other two are. Hmm, okay. So what else? I went through all this today. Um, we've got the KA1515s, these ULA type. Um, so I'm, most commonly I've got these in the Speccy. Uh, I think it's the 136 uh, firmware version. No, it's not the 136. 316? I think there might be 316 firmware. So you can see here, where's one that's the right way around? Yep, this one. So it's a KA1515. Now I know it's not X, it's K as in, well, Herson, isn't it? Uh, so it's kind of a her, <laughs> I guess. And it's an M2 and there's also an M1. And then you've got the firmware version, 136. So we've got a, we've got a M2002, we've got an M2001, an M2003. So the... 001 is the keyboard controller. So this is basically uncommitted logic sort of thing. So, you know, programmable logic or something, whatever. Okay, keyboard controller. Uh, number three is a CPU RAM controller. And this is the peripheral processor RAM controller. And now we've got a uh, one, 136, which is the VRAM controller there. So that accounts for those four chips. Well, what do we have here? We've got a KR1801VP1. What's a VP? K, KR1801VP. Oh, and then you've got the firmware version. So 55. So 55, I think this is a bi-directional buffer. Um, that's the... Um, KR580VV55A. So this is the Intel 8255 programmable parallel I.O. clone. So you'd see that in an 8080 system. So they reused it here. Um, and here, here we have these other 1801. So 65 is serial interface. So that's what I thought I saw on the network controller. And a 120 is interbus communication between CPU and peripheral processor, or the CPU and the peripheral processor. <laughs> so, yeah, I don't know which is which yet. Uh, oh, hang on, I think maybe that's the extra ROMs under here maybe. So that could be the extra uh, 207, 208, making up 32K of ROM. As you can see them, yeah. So that's a, yeah, obviously, um, happy to be corrected um, that's my brief understanding of the main main chips on here so right um, let's get some power into this thing finish off my monitor cable I'm just gonna start with plus 5 volts I think um, I haven't so far I haven't seen 12 volts or minus 12 volts being required so but maybe it's required for the serial or for the network card so I'm just going to try sticking five volts in because that's easy. I can I can verify ground and, and VCC by checking against one of these chips. So I will do that. All right. So this is where I come back to being a bit concerned. So pin seven of the eight two five five clone one two three four five six seven is ground. Easy enough. Which is pin two of the power input XP two. Now, pin 26 is VCC. 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26. I get something there. Um, which is pin 1. So, pin 1 is VCC, 5 volts, which you can't see. <laughs> but, I noticed this before. 
So if I go up to my multimeter. Now, if I go between ground and VCC, there's only 30 ohms impedance, um, which is troubling. That just seems, <laughs> it seems way too low. So that would lead me to think that something has failed on this board. So the machine's not gonna work. Um, where to start <laughs> what what chip could have failed that has kind of led to ground and vcc being only 30 ohms apart unless that's normal i don't know um it's a tough one do i apply five volts to the okay if I, obviously if i apply five volts to this and it gets current limited on the power supply then i know there's a there's definitely a short. Um, could be a capacitor. Could a capacitor has failed, maybe. Um, do I swap out all the capacitors? Maybe. Maybe that's a. Maybe that's what I should be doing. Before, maybe I just check all the capacitors. So they're like 550 ohms. Oh, hello, that's 30 ohms. Sorry, I don't know if you can see that. That's 30 ohms. Yeah, that's 30 ohms. <laughs> that's 30 ohms. Hmm. So what could they be? Yeah, anyway, all right, interesting. So I might have some more work to do before I can get this work. Well, I don't know if it's gonna work. Let's see. Okay, okay, okay. So, pin one is five volts, pin two is ground, and then three and four are the differential, 12 volts, plus and minus 12 volts. Um, that are used by this little fellow here, which is a 170AP2, which is equivalent to a Texas Instruments SN71511. Oh, something like that. Um, a dual line transceiver driver or something like that. So, and that's that's the serial interface right there. S2, so yeah, RS232. Um, so that's what the 12 volts is for. So I'm pretty sure we can get away with, with five volts. If only there was a, there was more than 30. Oh, I don't, yeah. Let's hook it up and see what happens, eh? Um, let's, like I say, as, as I've said several times, let's do the monitor cable first. So let's just go with composite, something simple. Composite. Uh, but, 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 uh, so we know that we know the bottom row bottom row is all ground except for this one in the corner which apparently according to this would be pin 10 which makes it the sink so if that's pin 10 that would be two, four, six, eight, which are all ground. So this would be one up here, I guess. One is blue. Three is, three is green. Five is Krasna, Krasnaya, Krasnaya. Um, as in Krasnaya October, red October. There's red. Seven is sound which means that nine is video. So I guess all I need is this top pin here and then one of these ground pins and that should be composite video. My thinks. So the way I've got this is P1 
Ken 10 has got the red stripe. So it's got the notch there that matches the notch up there. So I should want this second one and then basically, uh, yeah. All right, let me try and make this up. Now, what am I going to do? Uh, let's go. Let, let me figure this out. Okay, it should actually be pretty simple. So, the re again, so the red strip is pin 10, which is supposed to be sync. So this is pin 9, which is supposed to be composite video. And then, of course, next to it is pin 8, which is a ground. So I just need these two for composite. And then we've got, yeah. And because the both ports are the same, I can plug this into here and then just check continuity between the wire and the port next to it. So, so far it's all good. And I've got a spare RCA, oh, close up and spare RCA cable I can just quickly solder on. That'll, that'll, that'll do. And then for the, I'm just going to stick five volts in. So I'm just going to um, just hook up five volts in ground, basically to, to these two. Just quickly solder it on and see what happens. Okay. Okay. So it's all very, all very rough, as you can see here. <laughs> and I've got my video cable roughly made as well I haven't powered this on yet so I don't know I've got it set to 5 volts 2 amps um, alright let me get set up okay so don't know what's going to happen on and yep yeah. that's what I was worried about there's definitely some sort of short or something. So if we have a look. Oh, hang on. So yeah, if we have a look, power on. So immediately we're at two amps and the voltage sags. So definitely there's either a short somewhere. Well, 30 ohm short. Or one or more of these chips have failed, which is more likely. Maybe a capacitor. Oh, I haven't swapped out any electrolytics on, on these Soviet machines before. I could swap these out with, with Western ones. But it would be good to know <laughs> what to aim for first because like I said already already found that there's only 30 ohms between ground and VCC, so something somewhere isn't right, but where the fuck do I start? Hmm. Well, I can start by disconnecting that, I guess. That's not required. Yeah, all right. So I'm going to have to have a think about this one as well, I'm afraid. Sorry, it's uh, nothing exciting. I'm going to have to try and figure out where the issue might be. Yeah. Okay. I won't give up, but um, I'm just a... Yeah, I'm just not sure where to start. Okay, well, that's all for now. Uh, cheerio.